and welcome to the Mark Monitor podcast. I am your host, Allison Simpson, Director of Portfolio Marketing here at Mark Monitor. Mark Monitor is the leading enterprise brand protection solution and a Clarivate Analytics flagship brand, providing advanced technology and expertise that protects the revenues and reputations of the world's leading brands. This podcast is the first in a series of Mark Monitor podcasts designed to help those in the brand protection space understand this complex world a little better. We'll be discussing topics that are relevant right now, and we'll be joining forces with others in the industry to share different perspectives and insights. Today, we're going to be talking about SSL certificates. SSL certificates, or certs, are nothing new. However, over the past couple of years, and especially over this last year, they have become increasingly more important as more people are transacting online and wanting assurance that the website they're visiting can be trusted. We're also starting to see a shift in the way certs are managed. And what I mean by that is CERT management has traditionally sat within the IT department. However, for corporations with a global presence, we're starting to see that CERT management transition to the legal department and even the marketing department, as that's where domain management responsibilities typically reside. Not only are they responsible for trademarks and domains, now they're being tasked to manage SSL certificates, which is a fairly new concept to many. To help demystify the world of SSL certificates, we have Jeff Bardo from DigiCert joining us today to share his insight on what's happening in the industry, why it's so important for companies to convey that their website is secure, and how this new landscape affects the management of global domain portfolios. Jeff is a trust strategist and identity advocate. Eleven years into his tenure at DigiCert, he remains passionate about influencing organizations to establish and project fundamental trust on the Internet and equally passionate about helping individuals reach epiphanies about their online identities and how to gain control of them before someone else does. So thank you for joining us today, Jeff. Thank you very much for the warm introduction. I really appreciate that. And and note to self, I need to reword my bio so we can get out all the crunchy multisyllabic words and make it much easier (laughs) for someone else to say. (laughs) Good to be here. I I think it sounds very impressive. Well, thank you. Well, um... So, you know, for companies with a global presence, managing a global domain portfolio can be quite challenging in itself. And now you add certs into the mix, which, like I mentioned before, is a fairly new concept for many domain managers, and it gets even more challenging. Um, For those listeners that are new to the cert space, can you give a quick rundown of what SSL certs are and why they're so important? Yes, absolutely so. It would be a pleasure to do so. Now, um, everybody listening, uh, SSL certs are not that scary okay it's it's easy to get lost and there's so many intricacies and so many things to do to be honest let's talk about the form factor first and then I'll get into what it does and why it's important um, SSL certificates are these little files and and if you open one up it, it's full of gobbledygook you'll never it doesn't make any sense whatsoever but if you take this file and you plop it individually onto each server of yours and we're talking mostly web servers but other kinds of servers too, Um, those servers can then use the certificates to do two magical jobs. Uh, First, they encrypt or scramble data sent back and forth to those servers. Um, And what I mean by data is stuff that you can relate to, like the emails that you send and the money that you manage in your, your bank account or your brokerage account or the information that you send about your kids' grades and medical and payment stuff when when you're enrolling them in school like I'm doing right now. Well, not during this podcast. And all the stuff that you're buying on Amazon or eBay in my case. That's just the first job. The second job uh, is to validate that the server or the website um, running is, or or the brand it represents, is really who you think it is. Um, An SSL certificate can be thought of Um, It's kind of like a form of legal ID or a passport or some other noteworthy credential. Uh, Now, often people of all stripes and lines of work uh, tend to over-focus on the encryption job, that it's scrambling everything and everything's private and secret. And they often forget that the validation job is equally important because um, if anybody remembers from the the dawn of dot-com and the Internet uh, back in 93, um, it's helped fight against this idea that on the Internet, nobody really knows that you're actually a dog. So that's, those are the real jobs of SSL. and it, it's, it's, They're so important to have encryption and scramble things, but also to validate it, it's really who you think you're talking to. Right. Now, what happens if a company doesn't have a cert on their website? 
Um, you don't just miss out on these two things, you know, proving who you are and keeping things private. Uh, there, are some, there are some business benefits. Um, first, Google search uh, will rank sites which use SSL certificates on average about 4 to 5% higher than those which don't. And a 4 to 5% uplift in search ranking is sometimes a search marketer's dream. Um, it doesn't really stop there. Uh, browsers like Chrome and Firefox are now displaying the words not secure. And if you heard the color of my wording there, it's bright red. And they display this in a very prominent manner uh, for websites that don't use SSL at all. Or in specific cases like where passwords and payments are required but SSL isn't used. So what's crucial for small businesses to understand is that even if you don't have stuff that's worth encrypting, you do not want your site to be judged as not secure. Um, for larger businesses and, and brands, uh, it's additionally important to understand that this not secure warning is something that your IT department can't turn off. So if your employees access your intranet or your payroll service or during open enrollment or your ERP system, and any of those are not using SSL, then your employees will be told that that site is not secure. And that's, that could be pretty frightening for an employee. So CERT management has traditionally lived within the IT department and seen as more of a security function. Now we're starting to see CERT management transition to legal departments and even marketing departments to manage alongside domain assets. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the key benefits of CERT as it relates to IT, legal, and marketing? Absolutely. There's um, there's sometimes there's overlap between the three, but there's something there's there sometimes there's distinct benefits. Um, definitely for IT and IS, where certs have typ typically lived and SSL management has typically been, it's entirely a security thing. Uh, IT is interested in SSL certificates uh, doing their encryption job, um, especially when nobody these days wants passwords or crucial data being sent around in a you know, clear, observable, plain text format. Everybody wants their data encrypted as it moves. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a key job that, that IT wants to pay attention to. Uh, but for legal and marketing, um, you know, those, are, those are important, but I want to focus the spotlight here a little on, on the validation job that I mentioned that SSL has. Um, SSL certificates that are from an independent certification authority, and that's that's what we, it's shorthand, we call it CAs, but um, SSL certs that are from a CA um, like DigiCert will prove that the server is actually controlled by the person or the entity, the organization, who holds the certificate. Okay, so let me pause for a second while that sinks in. The certs prove that the server is controlled by the person who holds the certificate or the, the organization who holds that. Now, that's specifically what a DV or a domain validated certificate does. And I'm going to get a little into the different types of certificates, but just more from a benefits standpoint. There's other, obviously, flavors of SSL certificates that can do more than just proving that someone has control over a domain, uh, like demonstrating that uh, it's actually a registered and legal organization which controls that certificate and therefore that server. And I just said the word legal, and that's a crucial thing when legal or marketing is tasked with managing a brand's online presence. Because no one, no, no organization out there wants some unknown person or miscreant registering a domain name with your brand name. Uh, so that's really where organization validated or extended validation certificates, we call them OV and EV uh, for short, respectively. Uh, OV and EV will prove that someone from your organization, a real organization, a legal organization, got that certificate and that it now can be called up in a split second to prove that the server is really and legally you, you and your server and your domain, your content, your brand. So it kind of binds everybody together, the, the person who has the certificate, the organization who, where they work, um, that it's really a brand and a legal entity and that they all are related to that server or that website or that brand. So those are some pretty powerful things, but they come specifically from that second function, that second job of SSL, which is that validation function. Right. Now, and actually, that um, leads me into my, my follow-up question, which, you know, there are a lot of different cert providers out there, including companies that offer 
free search. Um, and what should buyers be aware of or look out for? Okay, the first thing I'm going to mention is uh, we're going to mention here is price. Um, uh, price is a big thing, especially when you're managing tens, hundreds, thousands of certificates. And uh, big brands, big organizations usually are. So price, the thing to remember is you get what you pay for. Um, there is a certification authority out there called Let's Encrypt. Um, uh, we love them, actually. You know, it's a, we, don't, we don't view them as anything but bad because they provide free SSL certificates to anybody who wants them. And we're big believers because we want to see that encryption function be deployed across the entire Internet. It's a very public and very scary Internet. But it's that free part of it that's really tempting for IT staffs because they usually hold the budget for SSL certificates. And when you're managing hundreds or thousands of these things, all of a sudden price is becoming very important to you. So it's critical to understand something about free certificates. And I don't mean to pick on Let's Encrypt, but Let's Encrypt is called Let's Encrypt, not Let's Validate or Let's have no doubt that it's really the website or brand that you think it is. No offense to anybody, you know, that that behind Let's Encrypt or, or using them. Let's Encrypt is a fully auto automated, almost robotic service, which does absolutely no validation that an organization is legal and legit. It doesn't do any validation of whether people do or don't work there or who they are. As a result, the the world's the world is seeing um, phishing sites and fraudsters and cyber criminals who want browsers to say that their fake sites are actually secure, these people are flocking to free services um, where they can get these free SSL certificates. Uh, there was a study last year uh, that showed uh, there were 14,000 sites that are using these free certificates that claim to be PayPal when in actuality of those 14,000 sites, four were actually PayPal. So that that actually delivers me then to get past the you get what you pay for and onto the idea of the company you keep. Um, your, your customers, I'm speaking to everybody listening here, your customers are working hard to assert, the, assert their brands and their organization's online identities. And Allison, in your introduction of me, I said I'm passionate about identity and you're hearing it right now. So in the name of saving money, you do not want your server's sole form of identification, you know, it's, it's driver's license or it's passport, uh, to be issued by the same source that issues fake IDs. And we here, we, we totally get the importance of this because we are the first, the original SSL provider, we're the leading and the authoritative SSL brand, and we cultivate our identity and our brand so that it can be relied on just, just like the brands that Mark Monitor's customers manage. Our, our brand and your brand certainly complement one another. Yes, they absolutely do. I agree with that. And that's why we partner together. We love it. So do we. Can you talk about, you? and you have touched on some of the changes in the industry that are happening right now, but can you, can you talk about some of the things that are changing in the industry that affect the SSL cert space? Absolutely. Um, there's all sorts of things going on here. Um, uh, first, uh, Digicert is now the source of all the certificates from the former semantic brands of SSL. Uh, because of this, we are expected to be the most trusted vendor out there. And in fact, the infrastructure, the, the, the wheels and gears and the robots that, that issue our SSL certificates, um, that whole infrastructure, so to speak, has been called the most trusted uh, there is among SSL. And that's quite a compliment from those uh, who were very critical of when those same certificates came from Symantec. Now, since all of our certificates come from this new infrastructure, trust me, you want a piece of this action uh, because how we're trusted reflects on how you are trusted. And you can hop on this, um, this goodness by reissuing all your existing certificates under, under our new infrastructure if Mark Monitor specifically urges you to do so. Trust me. If they say go do it, it's worth doing it. It's so worth it. Um, now, putting aside that, um, and, and given some things that I've said before, this is not going to be a surprise. There's, there's one big train of thought that needs to be abandoned, and it spawns idea like, um, oh, well, this web page doesn't handle anything worth encrypting, so it doesn't need SSL, or, or thinking things like, um, oh, let's just put SSL on the home page or on, on the landing pages you know, that search will access or when we need payments and passwords to be taken. Because 
we're going to save money by not protecting the rest. And we've all got to be thinking about that because I explained before, you only get these valuable search result boosts from using SSL across an entire site. That means every server, every page, every feed, every link, the whole thing. You don't get that boost, that uplift, uh, without using SSL everywhere on your site. And you can also only avoid that that scary not secure warning that's going to show up in bright red when you use SSL on every single page. That's the only way to avoid that. Right. Yeah, and in addition, I, I think another big um, industry's change in you know, GDPR has had a huge impact in the domain space um, as it relates to who is. But I know that's also had some you know, big effects on the SSL cert space as well. Um, if you don't have access to who is record, how do you validate um, domain ownership. So, like, how has it affected your business, it, it, specifically GDPR? Right. It, it, so, um, well, it, effect, it affected every business because we all had to agree on suddenly terms of service and, and privacy policies and accept cookies. Right. Um, but it was like that annoyance for everyone um, and, and just kind of setting the table with context. Who is is where you know anybody can learn who really operates a given domain and start thinking about something I said before about domain validated certificates. It's the source that CAs like us have long used to establish domain ownership, which is the key to any commercially available SSL cert. So GDPR had an impact on who is information for sites and organizations who have employees or locations or customers within the EU, and that pretty much means everybody and every site and organization out there. You can't just say, yeah, we're going to ignore Europe. Um, so DigiCert has worked with ICANN and with browsers and uh, registries, registrars, even with our competitors to ensure that GDPR compliant methods are in place and they are, they are fully supported. Because of that leadership position, we are able to offer all the available methods of domain validation, all of which are GDPR compliant, and, and all of which then are available for any flavor of SSL certificates, DV, OV, and EV. Now, it's also noteworthy that CAs, which have a direct relationship with registries and registrars, are way ahead of the game, because we have all the options available to us uh, jointly, and uh, these partnerships then can be used to pass the breadth of those choices along to customers. And this is this speaks to the tight and trusted relationship between DigiCert and Mark Monitor that uh, we definitely want everybody to take advantage of. Right. Yep. And I know that on our end, we have um, implemented a few new um, changes to our product to help with that additional validation now that, you know, there is that who restriction to who is. So. Yep. And it's so, yes. it's so reassuring to when you're going through the process to, to get these things you know, everybody in the organization is now tasked with GDR compliance, GDPR compliance. Right. But especially if, if it's, you know, we're talking to legal right now um, or IT who have a lot of boxes to check, having that assurance that you've got a CA and you've got Mark Monitor on your side and, and things are good, you don't have to worry about it, that's, that's a lot of stress off. We can go pay attention to the things that really need, need attention right. to be paid to. And there's a lot of other things to focus on as well. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> it's not a shortage. All right. Well, you know, is there? Can you share any best practices when it comes to SSL um, cert management? Anything that you want to leave our listeners with? Yes. Good nugget. Absolutely. So there's going to be two things. One is this. I'm going to go into an analogy here. So, so pardon me, just the way I speak sometimes. But there's also a relationship thing, and I'll touch on that too. So it, it's easy to it's easy for a lot of people to get their brains around how SSL certificates work by thinking about each SSL certificate is like an individual magazine subscription. And the reason I like to say that is because certificates and magazines have life cycles, so to speak. You buy them, uh, you pay for them, you receive them, you use them, and then usually once a year, it could be longer than that, but usually once a year you have to go and renew each. And, and certificates and magazines op operate the exact same way. So as a result, it's a heck of a lot easier when you're dealing with one brand management service and one SSL certificate vendor so then you can track your domains and certs with one platform instead of several. So going back to that analogy, you know, magazines or even newspapers, 
uh, are there even newspapers in existence? Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, wouldn't they be easier to subscribe to and renew and pay for if they didn't come from a bunch of different publishers? Uh, I get a brewing magazine, and I get a, a running magazine, and I get Men's Health, and God knows whatever else my, my wife sub sub subscribes to. <laughs> but they all come from different publishers, and it would be so much easier on everyone to work with as, as few providers as possible, you know, few publishers as possible, especially those with tight relationships like Mark Monitor and DigiSurf have. Um, now, separate from that relationship, there's also a benefit, um, and that's on the calendaring or the scheduling side of things. So imagine paying one vendor, but just like magazines, things are hard to manage when you know one subscription starts in March and another one starts in April and the next one doesn't go until December. Oh, and what about that one from August? It's hard to manage things when they're expiring throughout the year. So it's considerably easier to synchronize things so that you deal with it only once or a few times annually and you do them in chunks. Uh, so it's no surprise that if you can buy your certificates at the same time that you're registering your domain, uh, you're going to have a lot less discomfort upon annual renewals. And that's made even easier if you get to do it with just one CA and just one domain registrar. Now, before I go into this, uh, I, had, I said I had two points. One is the whole magazine analogy, and another one's about relationships. Uh, anything you want to you want to you want me to lay bare about that whole it works like a magazine thing, Elsa? Oh no no no! I was at, well. The one thing I was going to touch on that's really like with with Mark Monitor, we do one of our best practices for domain management is that consolidation, having all your domains consolidated with one registrar, so that you can track better track expiration date, renewal notices, and such. So that just it yep. does it fits nicely. It's a nice complement to also add SSL certificates on top of that. So yes, no, I and yep, I can as much as you can. That do to synchronize them, it's going to save you the headache. It's, sometimes SSL certificates are like herding cats. It's great to know where the cats are. They're all in one pen, and you can deal with them all at once instead of them fleeing in all directions. Right. So of those best practices, one is the magazine analogy. And you know, I talked a little about whittling down your vendors um, as much as you can, synchronization. The other thing that I wanted to mention as, as a best practice, SSL certificate management is a relationship opportunity. And this is, you're, you're not going to hear this a lot, but I'm a relationship guy, so I like to talk about this. This is an opportunity for everybody listening to this podcast. Marketing might be buying the certificate. Uh, IT's got to go install it. It's, legal's got to go and worry about the compliance aspect. It, so it, it's crucial for these groups to work cross-functionally. This is an opportunity to set up those relationships ahead of the game and maintain them, especially after the certificate is procured and the domain set and all that kind of stuff, because you're going to have to undergo all the annual machinations for other domains and certificates again, and that's whether you're renewing or establishing new domains and new certificates. It's good. This is an opportunity to, to set some good working relationships. And also, if set backups so you know who the people are organizationally that um, your main contact works with. So in case anybody goes on vacation or suddenly needs the office and there's a certificate that expired, we hear about this all the time, you know who the people are. Take this opportunity to go and set and, and, and maintain those relationships. Oh, that's a very excellent point that you made because again with domain management we say the same thing it can't just be one department it really has to be all three departments working together I and mean, you know when you're looking at maybe letting domains expire it's not just one team that decides that it's really all three if not four team with compliance in there so no I think that's a very excellent point thank you for Good. raising that all right well um, thank you so much for joining us today Jeff and um, sharing your insights into the world of SSL certs they don't seem so scary anymore um, and and thank you all who have tuned in today. Uh, if you like our show and want to know more about SSL certificates, domain management, or brand protection in general, you can visit us at www.markmonitor.com.